Jeezy here. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm kind of anxious to get started in this. It's been a week since uh, I did anything out here with you. It's like nine below zero outside. One of the things, if we're going to have a little transmission school, I thought it'd be important to uh, talk about a couple of things. And uh, it, it just kind of, the question got raised in my mind. And I went to Google and I went to YouTube and I ended up going back to the old uh, dictionary here. Magnesium. What is magnesium? And why did they use it on these Volkswagen transmissions? And if you look at American cars, a lot of them are aluminum now, but uh, back in the day they were cast iron, you know, for years they made them out of steel. But uh, let me give you a definition of what I found here for uh, magnesium. Come on. <laughs> okay, magnesium. A silver white, light, malleable, ductile, metallic element that occurs abundantly in nature and is used in metallurgy and chemical processes, in photography, in signaling, and in the manufacture of pyrotechnics because of the intense white light it produces on burning. And in construction, especially in the form of light alloys. I think that would apply to this. One of the other benefits is when they were machining these castings, they did not have to use lubricant. Okay. The other word I wanted to read you a definition of is detent, because a lot of people use this word, and it's the correct word, but let me just go ahead and read it here. Uh, detent, a device as a catch, dog, or spring-loaded operated ball for positioning and holding one mechanical part in relation to another so that the device can be released by force applied to one of the parts. That's real important throughout this transmission and uh, when I use that word we'll touch on it again later but I, I just wanted to give you the uh, the definition of, of that word detent. Now, <clears throat> let's just uh, have a close look at it here. And uh, I hope the light is going to be such. I tried to put some lighting aids here so that uh, you get the good effect, but. Let's kind of zero it in here, and I'll stop talking, and I'll maybe come back out here. <clears throat> okay, first off, let's get some clarification here. This is going to be the pinion shaft. The bottom shaft is the pinion shaft. That's what goes to the ring gear and connects to the wheels. The top shaft is the main shaft. It goes directly to the crankshaft on the motor and it's engaged and disengaged by the clutch. Now, you're shifting, this is the nose cone, and your shift rod that goes down the tunnel up to your gear shift lever is connected to this. It moves left and right, then it moves back and forth. So here, here you can see it moves up and down, you know, when you move it back and forth in your neutral gate, and then it'll go in and out according to which gear you're in. Alright. Now, here's an example of them. Okay. This is the direction that your engine is running when it runs. It's going to be running like this. Now, the torque is going to be transferred from the main shaft down to the pinion shaft and it's going to use the different gears to transmit that torque so you get the different gear ratios. What's happening is that is putting force because when you put the load of the car, the weight of everything, it's trying to spread those gears apart. It, they're going to jump right out. That's how you can get breakage. If something moves, and just because it's steel doesn't mean you don't have movement. 
there's flexing, there's an incredible amount of, of things that happen inside an engine to the crankshaft. There's a lot of forces coming into play, a lot of vibration, and that's going to affect a lot of things, but everything's moving. This is the equivalent of being in neutral right now, and I'll demonstrate that by I'm going to hold the pinion gear. So your wheels aren't turning, you're parked, and your engine is idling, and the shafts are turning like this. Nothing's engaged. Doesn't matter whether you have the clutch in or out, the car's not moving, but the engine is running. I don't think this is going to work. All right, we're going to go back to the book. Almost any transmission book, now, if you look at my previous videos, what I did was just made copies of this out of one of my books, put them in here in plastic three ring binder with the with the coverings on it. Now, these things drove me nuts. I was trying to understand transmissions and how they work. It didn't make sense. Right here, they show you what I just showed you. The transmission's in neutral. So this is first, reverse, second, third, and fourth. So what's happening right there is these are meshing. <laughs> this will make sense later. Hang in there with me. When you go to first gear, it, the force goes through the, this pair of gears. First gear. What this drawing is not showing correctly, which really ticks me off, they show you this arrow here, but what happens is this assembly is moving over to catch these dogs. This is on the side of the gear. These, this part of the main gears that you see turning in the jig and that you see in the transmission, they're meshing all the time. What allows them to engage and disengage is this device right here. Your shifting fork goes over this and this piece moves up against this which captures these gears. When you go down to the, uh, this, the next gear, second gear, this piece comes off of that through neutral and grabs these two sets of dogs. In a Volkswagen they only have one set, but this is out of a Volkswagen book, so I don't know why they're showing it that way. But that's what's really happening. And now, if we go over to, to the next gear and look at third gear, you, when you shift it, when you grab the shift lever and you go from second to fourth, what you're doing is you're moving this one into the neutral position. Then your shifter go, moves to the right a little bit through the neutral gate. It grabs hold of this one and then it pushes that over around this gear because everything's going the opposite way you're shifting. When you're pushing it forward, you're pushing it back. And when you're pulling back on the shifter to second and fourth gears, you're pulling the shift shaft forward in the tunnel. Okay, so in third gear, this moves over and it grabs these two dogs and it, it makes your force just like the black line shows here. Fourth gear, it's a straight shift back. You come to neutral. This, this is already left in neutral and now you're going into fourth gear. And reverse is on top of this one here. Don't worry about whether you got this perfect or not. Just accept it and you will see it here for real. <clears throat> okay, so let's just do it right now here. Alright. So and this in, this transmission is dry so it's it's not shifting smooth at all but it's shifting well enough where I want to show you okay this center shift fork I can't even hardly get it to go there now you're in first gear and now you're in second gear See how everything still meshes? Okay, now you're in neutral again. Now, fourth gear, third and fourth gear are up underneath that 
are partially inside here. Now I get my camera all gooed up. And you'll see how it's moving there. You're in fourth gear, you're in neutral, now you're in third. These are the shift forks, these are the shift rods, and these are the adjustments that everybody talks about. And this is something that you can't do from the inside of the transmission. This is why you have this shifting fork jig. These are smooth shafts and these are the nuts. It's a pinch clamp that pinches around that. Those things got to be right on the money or it'll jump out of gear. It won't go in gear all the way. There's a lot of issues. It, it'll as you're driving down the road you get under load or let off the gas it'll pop out that's part of the problem with getting them adjusted correctly on a lot of the uh, American cars that I had dealings with uh, the shift assembly was on the outside it was a side loader it was on the outside and you could adjust the threaded rods on the outside of the transmission seemed like a, a smarter way of doing it but this was all compact and and this is the way they did it okay now we're going to look at it from the opposite side so you can see what's happening and i think it's a little easier to see So this is a normal rotation. This is more like we were just looking at in the book. So it goes like this. There's first gear. Then you come back to there's second gear. It moves back. Here's the row of, they're showing the synchronizer up. That must be what that extra set of, of teeth are, is the synchronizer gear. And, but this is what is being grabbed, and this is what's transmitting your power. It's hard to believe, but that's the way it works. Now, I don't know if you can see, third and fourth. We're in fourth gear now. Now you're in third gear. Alright, and boy, it just not. Let's go this other way to show you reverse. When you hit reverse. This one is being activated right here. <laughs> there it is. Okay. That's reverse. It has to go the... Make your pinion shaft turn the opposite direction. And that is not a good view. And my hands are getting dirty. <laughs> I'm trashing my camera. <gasps> That's all right. You're worth it. Okay. So now we're going to take it back out of reverse. And that's the direction it goes. Okay. Okay. This bit's getting a little long, so I think we uh, should just wrap it up, wrap this segment up. Now, I know there's going to be some of you out there that still aren't getting it. The light's not coming on. Don't feel bad. Don't feel like you're not catching on. And I don't understand how this is really working. And then there's others of you that uh, have got your hands in there uh, and actually seen some of this stuff and fondled it. Uh, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. He says, oh, yeah, this is basic stuff. Speed it up, speed it up. Well, 
my feeling is that if this is going to be an educational video for and getting guys up to speed, that you, you know, it's just like building a house. You got to have that foundation. If you don't have a good foundation, you can't build the rest of the house and expect it to come out right. And uh, so I think it's important that we do this. And I know there's some of these guys uh, that are saying, "Yeah, I, I watched this whole video. Where is a tip or a trick about racing transmissions and all of that sort of stuff?" And uh, okay, so I guess I got to give you a little nugget. So here we go. It may be useful to you, it may not. Let me grab you off the stand here and uh, get some closure here. Here is a here is an early model transmission pinion shaft. This is the first gear. This is the uh, bearing pack for it. And although they're both these are both the keyed shafts, the threaded shafts. You'll see that there's a difference here in the thickness of first gear. They're both first gear, but the one on the right is a lot thicker and a lot stronger. This is why they tell you don't use one of those real early transmissions for uh, race applications. Now, the other thing that we were talking about one of those other videos was the hand-packed needle bearings. You'll notice on the early transmission, they put a lot more bearings than they did on the later than they did on the later transmission. Over here, they double stacked them, and a lot of that has to do with stability. With a narrow gear, you want that to be a lot more solid so that it rides right on the uh wider gear you could save a little bit on that it's all about manufacturing economy and uh as uh, you always hear what the designer and engineer wanted by the time it got down to actual production uh all these accountants got their fingers in there and said we can't afford to do this or that or we can't build the machine or spend the time and you know that's the same old story always has been since the start of time just imagine to yourself how much alcohol had to be involved for the original people to think this stuff up and then they had to decide what kind of metals they were going to use and how they were going to machine it i mean if there was over 20 million Volkswagens manufactured oh my gosh can you imagine this stuff had to be right and over the years they found cheaper better um most of the time i gotta say they refined it and and did make things a little bit better so anyhow part of this light and I know the part that you're really having trouble with that it doesn't show on these diagrams here is this part has got bearings underneath it and this part's got bearings on it now the reason it's it's got to do that it's a matter of it's a matter of manufacturing here's a here's a main shaft here and and you can see the bearing inside there when they manufacture this main shaft they had to machine first gear and second gear it's all part of the shaft that's when you go to buy replacement uh, first second set you can't just get a different first gear ratio or a second gear ratio a lot of guys have a transmission well, I want a super low gear like a Ford truck that that has a granny low so I can rock crawl but I won't lose my speed on the pavement well the reason that's expensive it's like 500 bucks for a race main shaft and uh, it's because the first and second are machined on it when you get to the other shaft which is where uh, third and fourth gears are at fixed and attached then you've got um, two separate gears and it's because of the way that it is assembled if you look at your gear stacks here if if this one's solid now it's back into here you're sliding the, the parts as you assemble it over the end of it now you have to get by first uh, or fourth third and second to get all these bearings and the synchro hubs and everything on so all that has to be left off and you're and you're sliding it down over this shaft and then you build it the rest of the way this one's keyed and this one's keyed bearings 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 it's not keyed it's solid now don't worry next video i think the light bulb's going to start coming on and uh, it'll start making a lot more sense to you. So, uh, 
hope you enjoyed this uh, segment. I know it was long. And thanks for watching. Thanks for subbing. Easy Jeezy out. <laughs> what the hell's the button? <laughs> there we go.